Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. I am the Nightwalker and uh, just recently I reviewed the 1991 movie The Addams Family. Well now I want to talk about episode one of season one of The Addams Family. Um, the show aired in 1964 and um, you know this is a, a genuine classic and like I said before when I reviewed the movie of The Addams Family, if you haven't seen the TV show, um, you know, if you can get past the black and white you really, you know, if you're a fan of the Adams family, you really would love the show. The show is a lot of fun to watch. Um, you have a wonderful cast here. You have, you know, John Aston as Gomez, who I don't know, just my opinion. Don't get me wrong, okay? Like Raul Julia, he was amazing as Gomez. I have nothing but praise for him as Gomez. And Tim Curry did a fantastic job at it too. But I think, you know, I think there are probably people who when they watch this show if they knew anything about, you know, Charles Adams' comic or whatever, I imagine they probably saw this and they probably figured like, you know, that role almost seems like it was created just for John Aston. He fits the role of Gomez so perfectly. He's, you know, he has that kind of funny, I don't want to say he's funny looking, but he just, just his facial features and the way he carries himself, he really pulls off Gomez, you know, and makes him, <clears throat> excuse me, got all choked up. Makes him <clears throat> endlessly entertaining. And you have Carolyn Jones as uh, Morticia, who she's, you know, fantastic. Her delivery, the way she delivers her lines is super fantastic. Like I said, you know, I'm not I'm not throwing shade at Angelica Houston or Daryl Hannah. You know, they both did. I think they both did really well as, you know, they did good in the part too. But Carolyn Jones, just the way she, she carries herself and, and she has, you know, like, I always love the way she always has such fluid movement, you know, just when she turns, she just has this kind of, you know, way of moving and things that, you know, I think is, it's amazing. You know, she's, she's, you know, brilliant to watch on this, ep on the, well, on the whole show. She just has that way about her and, you know, her humor is so, oh man, it's just fantastic. You got Ted Cassie here playing Lurch and he also plays the role of Thing, if you, watch the bonus features you find out that you know thing the hand he does he plays that as well <clears throat> and um oh yeah ted cassie is lurch i mean he did he was so good at it i mean just some of the some of the facial features he makes or whatever you know i was like i mean you can see like right there the way he looks there and then when they sit there lurch you need to smile he's in there kind of like you know it's it's so funny when he tries to do that but uh yeah so uh and you got Wednesday and Pugsley who, you know, that's kind of the one thing I really, really hate to say this because, you know, both of them were really good on the show. But I got to be honest, you know, when the movie came along and Christina Ritchie got the role of Wednesday, she, boy, like I said in the movie review, she just went at it with gusto and she ended up owning that role. And she became so, I mean, she became such an integral part of that movie, you know, the character. and. uh what I have to say, though, um, even though I like Pugsley as a character, Pugsley to me always just seemed like he was just always kind of there. You know, he's he never really like jumped out at me and stuff, even though, you know, we'll get to future episodes. But and then last but not least, we got uh, Jackie Coogan as Uncle Fester, who, you know, that's one of one of the jokes I love in this show. It's like, see, because I oh, haven't even started talking about the episode yet. I apologize. But the episode starts off. We got. um a truant officer, he comes to the Adams family home and he's telling them, you know, that, uh, you know, the kids have never set foot inside school and this needs to change. They could be getting into trouble by not having their kids attend public school. And the first one that he talks to is Morticia. Morticia just basically explains to him that, you know, I know nothing of the law. That's Gomez. You know, he's the one who, you know, he's the one who handles the law and everything else. And we, you know, later on in, in the series, you come to find out that being a lawyer is supposed to be like another one of Gomez's, um, you know, another one of his, you know, like, I don't know if you want to call it a hobby, but one of his specialties. He's supposed to be a lawyer, too. So, But uh, she said, so if you want to talk about the law, you have to talk to my husband, Gomez. And so she gets Lurch to take, you know, this Mr. Hilliard up to talk to Gomez. And, um, you know, you got some great jokes there, too, because... When, when Hillier first gets to the house, he's, you know, the first one he meets is Wednesday. And she's, you know, um, she invites him in and, you know, he's all like, you know, your house. And she's like, yeah, we love it. It's all nice and gloomy. And 
And then Pugsley comes up. He's like, Wednesday, I fixed your doll and hands her a doll that doesn't have a head on it. And he's all like, that doll doesn't have a head on it. And she's all like, that's right. Grandmama talked to, taught us about the French Revolution and, you know, taught us about Marie Antoinette. And so Pugsley just cut the head off. So I was like, oh, okay. So anyway, so Lurch takes Mr. Hilliard up to talk to uh, Gomez. And, you know, like I said, when you see, you know, you see John, John Aston as Gomez, you know, just you almost think this part was created for him. But, um, you know, just he, he does such a great job, too. You know, he's so he's so animated, you know, and that's like another thing that I think that, uh, you know, Raul Julia did equally brilliant as well. So, you know, Gomez is just such an animated kind of lively character, just always vibrant, always kind of moving around and stuff. And so Hillier is trying to convince, you know, Gomez that they need to put the kids in school. And Gomez is like, no, we don't need to put the kids in school. Grandmama is already teaching them about history and art and painting and music and all these other kind of things, you know. And, and um, you know, that's kind of funny. He's like, but what about, you know, the children learning how to read and stuff like that? It's like, well, what's a six year old going to read? But one day that six year old is going to be 26. He's like, well, come see me then. <laughs> so so at first, you know, they make it clear they don't want to put their kids in school but you know the school board insists and they send um they send the adams family a letter saying that they do need to put their kids in school otherwise they could get into serious trouble now first gomez is totally opposed to the whole thing but you know we find out of course that morticia she you know <clears throat> i mean this in a good way when i say this okay i'm not saying this in any derogatory way but she has gomez wrapped around her finger i mean she can you know she and it's not that hard to see. I mean, she can make him do anything because, you know, it's like, you know, like I said, you know, Carolyn Joe, she brought this, um, you know, she brought not only she bring the humor, but she brought a certain sexiness to it. And, you know, I think that, uh, you know, when you see her play the part and it, it's not really hard at all to see how men could fall for like a woman like her, you know, just um, she just has this way of just, you know just making him melt like butter. And and so she gets him, but she doesn't do it in a bad way. She doesn't do it to do things that are terrible. She does it to, you know, just to get him to see the, the right side of things. And so he finally agrees. And so they send the kids off to school. And, you know, so they're at their first day of school and he's not digging it at all. And he's all like, you know, man, the kids would be home already if they let Pugsley drive the bus. So the kids come in little Wednesday, she's crying and she's throwing a fit and stuff. So um, Gomez and Morticia, they go up to see her and, um, you know, they're, she's crying because they slayed the dragon. It's like, what? They slayed a dragon? You know, and it's like, yeah, in a story. And it's like, you know, so Gomez and, and Morticia, they're totally offended by this and they're horrified. But, you know, how? Oh, my God. You know, a knight in ar shining armor you know, slated defenseless little dragon. How could that be? You know, the, what kind of stuff are they teaching these kids in school? So, and, uh, even uncle Fester, that's another joke. I really like on the episode two is that you see uncle Fester there, you know, and uncle Fester is like, you know, I didn't go to school and look at me. I turned out just fine. And, you know, one of the jokes is, you know, Morticia says, you know, now uncle Fester looks charm and personality aren't everything, you know, so they decide that they want to talk to Mr. Hilliard. So they bring him back. And, you know, of course, Mr. Hilliard, he's completely freaked out by the Adams family. He doesn't want to have anything to do with them. You know, he thinks they're all insane. But they bring him back and, you know, they're telling him about how they're offended by the, uh, you know, stories, you know, Grimm's fairy tale. At first, you know, Morticia thinks it's great. Wow, stories by a man named Grimm. How wonderful, you know, but. So they bring him back and they tell him about, you know, we don't like we don't want our kids being taught stories about, you know, um, knights being slayed by dragons and things like that. Um, you know, and we don't you know, what about Hansel and Gretel? You know, these juvenile delinquents pushing sweet old ladies into ovens and things like that. And uh, even though I forgot to mention at one point they do go visit the uh, they do go to visit the school board. And the funny thing is the two ladies who are running the school board, they honestly think that. Mr. Hilliard has an alcohol problem. They think he's drinking and stuff. So at one point, Gomez is uh, saying, you know, maybe we should get a hold of our old friend, you know, and tell him, you know, to practice voodoo on Mr. Hilliard. You know, maybe, maybe it'll loose him up if we, you know, have him make a doll of him, stick a few pins in him and stuff. And uh, the, the ladies, they think that Gomez is joking. They think he's just, you know, you know, he's just 
as the British would say, he's just taking the piss. But so anyway, so they're even they start getting on. What about you know putting him in boiling oil and stuff? And Gomez is like, wow, I like the way you people think. Of course, they don't realize like Gomez takes this stuff literally, you know. So, <clears throat> but anyway, so they talk about everything and they get to. Uh, you know, they get Hillier to agree to, you know, Hillier basically, he just wants to get the hell out of there, you know. And so he's willing to just tell the Adams family anything they want to hear just so that they'll let him go. So he tells them, yeah, I'll, I'll tell them whatever you said. And you guys, you know, you're going to change the whole education system and stuff like that. And so he gets out. And then the episode ends with, uh, you know, um, Morticia and Gomez. They get a call and, you know, Morticia says, yes, the kids will be in school tomorrow. And they say, it's Mr. Hillier, you know, saying that the school board likes our ideas and things like that. And, you know, we may have changed the world. And Morticia's like, do you think we did the right thing? And that's pretty much where the episode ends. But, uh, oh, man, you know, I love this show. I've watched it all the time growing up. And, you know, this is one of my favorite comfort shows. And, uh, yeah, you know, if you like the movies, you know, like I said, you know, don't be afraid because it's in black and white. Okay. This show is actually really, really good. And the cast is fantastic. They bring a lot of fun to it. It's, you know, I mean, of course it's, it's more lighthearted than Charles Adams comics were because obviously it's night television and need to be more family friendly. But, um, cause if you look at some of the Charles Adams comics, they, they do tend to be quite a bit on the dark side. And that's what I was saying when I reviewed the Adams Family movie. It was just like, you know, yeah, I understand that, you know, it's it's not meant to be like, you know, all out horror or anything. But, you know, it kind of would be nice to see some, a little bit more of an edge to it. But other than that. So anyway, yeah, you know, this is it. We talked about episode one of the Adams Family. The Adams Family goes to school and I really enjoy it. It's a great pilot episode. It's a great episode. Get the whole thing started. So, so yeah, so. um that's pretty much about it. Uh, if anybody took the time to watch this video, I thank you for doing it and I appreciate you for doing it. I honestly hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, and I hope you enjoy the Adams Family as much as I do. Um, if you did enjoy the video, please like and subscribe. There'll be weekly videos posted. And uh, until then, take care. And this is the Nightwalker. So be careful when you're out strolling around out at night. You might see me walking towards you. Good night.